good afternoon all please type your attendance in the command window so in the last class we have discussed disaster risk management now we are going to discuss disaster prevention what is disaster prevention and what is the necessity of disaster prevention as we have already discussed everything about all these things we will continue slowly we will finish this module if possible today and for that first of all we must know the definition of disaster prevention what is the definition of disaster prevention and i have mentioned that there are natural disaster as well as man made disasters so whenever a disaster happens we need to prevent them we need to try to prevent them that's the actual term because we cannot prevent every disasters as we expect so we need to take preventive measures to restrict or prevent the natural hazard or natural disaster and those are having harmful effect on either people or the property that is economic assets so this is the main definition or this is the definition of disaster prevention and we can say that the disaster prevention is the method or it is a measure taken to eliminate the root causes what are the root causes of that make people vulnerable to disaster there may be a disaster like flood uh, earthquake everything and if a flood act definitely there will be a water flow through the cities and that water flow will in, uh, enter into our house and damage all the vulnerable properties of us that include electronic gadgets and uh, uh, cot bed sofa everything all household equipments may affect due to a floody area and flood inside the house so we need to prevent the root causes of that action that is if our location is just nearer to a river we need to take necessary measures we need to have a wall to prevent water overflow to the house so that's a measure after that we can have our economically high priced equipment at the first level that is first floor if that is kept in the ground floor if a big tv 72 inch tv is kept in ground floor or double door fridge is kept in down ground floor that may affect by the action of disaster so we need to keep our high price product in the first floor or second floor according to the position of our house and nearness of a floody situation so that's the important thing and in a earthquake area we need to i have already mentioned we need to provide an isolation foundation that's the best prevention to protect constructive buildings constructions everything from earthquakes and we can see the buildings made in the wetland may collapse by the action of disaster when 
the water flow is increasing in the sea or there is a tor uh, toran uh, tornado or wetland is a very important place where the strength of mud is very less due to that there is a chance of falling of building near or to wetland we have an example of wetland construction at marud that is uh, collapsed by the government due to this safety issues the main concern also that damage ecology of the society and that area that's why we have blasted marud flat and that is constructed in a wetland the strength of the building also very less we currently that building not having any problem but nearby future that is around 5 to 6 years the wetland will uh, reduce that strength of the mud where that construction is pillar so automatically there will be a big damage and there is a chance of many plenty of people may affect due to that hazard so even though that's make economical loss for plenty that is very important for saving of life that's an example of disaster prevention and the basis of disaster prevention or uh, the disaster prevention will become a successful only when we are planning them and for that for planning the disaster we have two type of assessment required that is risk should be identified by two methods before planning the preventions if you are planning for preventions we need to identify the risk first there are two type of risk identification first one is hazard identification and second one is vulnerability assessment and in the first case that hazard identification if a disaster happen what are the direct hazards and indirect hazards are happening to the vulnerable community as well as the government as well as the nearby surrounded people are identified also after that we will assess its vulnerability how much it damage the properties of a people how much life will be uh, taken away by the disaster that will be assessed by the vulnerability analysis once we identify the hazard as well as assessing the vulnerability we can decide which kind of prevention should be implemented to avoid that disaster or hazard for that there are two type of prevention when we are discussing a disaster prevention there are two type of preventions first one is primary prevention and second one is secondary prevention first one is primary prevention and second one is secondary prevention and in the case of primary prevention whenever we are focusing it on we need to reduce that is we need to reduce or avoid the risk of event occurring whenever a event is going to be happen or hazard is going to be happen or disaster is going to be happen we need to prevent that hazard and vulnerability if you are telling an example uh, we have mentioned different uh, stepped on stepped like disasters that is overcrowding due to overcrowding so in such situation we can prevent the disaster by controlling the crowd that is we need to avoid overcrowding at a specific area where there is a chance of disaster and we should avoid deforestation we should control or we should limit deforestation by proper methods and chalk the drainages and provide service so that is when flood the area we can see that we need to provide passages for water through the cities then only the water will be far fallen away else that area will be under severe flood situation that may harm plenty so we can take that opportunity to reduce the 
flood disaster by chalk drainage and provide services to all and secondary prevention when we are uh, discussing primary that's a direct one secondary means recognize promptly the event and reduce its effect in this case we can identify the event and we can reduce the effects we can avoid not we cannot uh, avoid this one that is there will be a hazard or event will be there and we can avoid that impact actually that's the correct word we can reduce its impact by proper prevention an example if you are telling and uh, if by alerting the pupil if there is a city of high congestion that is plenty of people are living in a local area then we need to alert them then we need to give them proper services like immunization we have vaccination for epidemics food clean water sanitation health care to that affected community or population in the first case we are trying to avoid the disaster and in the second case we are trying to avoid the effects of disaster that is a small change first one we are directly trying to avoid that disaster in the secondary prevention we are trying to avoid the effect of disaster that is whenever a disaster happens there will be an impact we are trying to reduce that impact by providing food clean water immunization sanitation health care etc that's the difference between primary and secondary prevention after when we are discussing prevention we should focus on mitigation whenever a disaster happens when uh, we are planning to prevent that disaster sometimes we cannot do anything the disaster will be happening soon so in such situation we need to mitigate or lessen or limit the adverse impacts of hazard related to that disaster this is very important whenever we are planning for a prevention that will not be successful in every cases in such cases we need to focus on mitigation that includes lessening or limitation of adverse impacts of hazards and related disaster this is the mitigation and whenever we are going to discuss the objective of disaster mitigation we should focus on two area first one is hazard likelihood reduction or risk consequence reduction please note down first one is hazard likelihood reduction and second one is risk consequence reduction both these objective should be satisfactorily controlled or com uh, completed by the disaster mitigation which is we are planning to implement so when we are focusing on hazard likelihood reduction the objective is mainly focus on that hazard and normally objective is to appropriate uh, for uh, natural hazards and uh, we need to mitigate the occurrence level uh, once the earthquake such disaster may affect continuously for years so we can mitigate that effect mitigate that occurrence and if you are taking example the flood occurrence is reduced by creating defensive wall near the sea it's an example probably flood will be affected to the city by river or a sea if the water level increases in the river or sea that will flow into the city and that will cause the flood so here we are planning to reduce that one by providing a boundary or a barrier or a wall near to the sea or river this is the example and when we are focusing on risk consequence uh, reduction that is risk consequence reduction we are mainly focusing on the vulnerability how much impact 
that hazard can cause that will be focused on by risk consequence reduction risk consequence reduction it is very important and uh, it involves ensuring that population structure or the system are able to withstand such an event with very few negative consequences as possible whenever we are focusing on ensuring that population structure and other systems are able to withstand for such event such hazard with as few negative consequences as possible in the first case there will be hazard and that is prevented or mitigated by providing a ward that's a primary and here if you are taking a erosion resistance a sea defense wall in keta volta region of ghana has been made you can take an example you can google it by uh, typing uh, erosion resistance sea defense wall in the keta ghana sasira kitu so that's an example so mitigation means lessening the impact of a hazard or disaster the primary aim, we have two objectives so when primary aim is to decrease the death and injury to the population whenever we are mitigating a disaster primary objective is to decrease risk of death and injury to the population as we have already discussed in the previous case due to some reasons due to protection of people we have spent a lot of money for good that incident the secondary aim is to decrease the damage or economic loss there are two aims first aim is to save the people and uh, reduce the injuries to the population and second one is to save the economy so to uh, reduce decrease the damage and economic losses that is the two aims of disaster mitigation and whenever we are focusing on disaster mitigation there are two type of mitigation measures very important whenever we are giving importance to disaster mitigation we need to focus on two type of mitigation first one is structural mitigation and second one is non structural mitigation when we are focusing on structural mitigation it is mainly focusing on reduction or avoid possible impacts of hazards that's important reduction or avoid possible impacts of hazards that's a structural mitigation measure and when we are discussing non structural mitigation measure this refers to policies awareness knowledge development public commitment and methods operating practices including participatory mechanism and provision of information which can reduce risk and related impacts don't read a no need to read everything i will simply explain these two things first one is structural structural means what something physically available we are building a structural mechanism for structural construction that's an example if in a flood situation i have mentioned that we will provide drainage system we are constructing drainage system for avoiding flood we are using isolated pillaring or uh, flooring for the safeguard from earthquakes to save flood from sea or uh, ocean we are providing sea wall that's a structural mitigation measure that is there all places we are having a physical structure which is visible as a mitigation process but when we are taking the second one that is non structural mitigation here there will not be any physical structure we are giving training mock drill everything to the people to aware them to safeguard them from the disaster we will give complete knowledge which is available to us about the disaster to the vulnerable community or affected community 
and how we can overcome this one and that legislations disaster legislations everything is coming under non structural mitigation measures okay there are two type of mitigation first one is structural one and second one is non structural mitigation measures when we are discussing structural mitigation measures we have to focus on physical structures we are having to we are focusing on building physical structures to avoid disaster or reduce the impact of disaster and in non structural disaster mitigation there is no physical structure present here we will give awareness knowledge and public commitments which are physically not visible and which is very important for a mitigation process hope you can follow the two types probably uh, this may ask in your question paper so very important and we also discuss how to prepare disaster preparedness and when we are focusing on disaster preparedness after prevention and mitigation is still there is a chance of disaster is there we need to prepare the people aware the people to build them capacities to face a disaster this cannot be done individually this is a team work including government professionals and response and recovery organizations communities including individuals and every stakeholders these people will be known as stakeholders need to respond uh, fastly and act accordingly whenever required and that will reduce the hazard of that disaster this is the important one we need to reduce the impact we need to ready the people who are vulnerable community who are going to be affected by the disaster to face the disaster we need to provide them knowledge we need to build their capacities that includes structural and non structural to face a disaster if a community is known that there is a 100% sure that there is a disaster is going to happen they will ready to face that one and they will safeguard their economies as well as their uh, life as well as their near ones that is relatives life friends life for the reduction of disaster so disaster prevent uh, preparedness having following components and whenever we are going to plan a comprehensive disaster preparedness strategy we need to focus on following points first one is hazard risk and vulnerability analysis we need to focus on this point we have to get the values we need to get the values of hazard impact of hazard risk and vulnerability and we need to act accordingly we need to prepare the people according to that available data and the second one is second one is response mechanism and strategies here we need to have an the response mechanism that is whenever a disaster is going to be happen the people must be saved or evacuated during a uh, during a disaster so for that we should have a proper response mechanism we should have a plan to act in a disaster situation and we should have a strategy to save people as well as vulnerable properties during a disaster this is very important and after that we need to have a preparedness planning for a comprehensive disaster preparedness strategy we should have a preparedness plan and every people every different kinds of people that include police fire force military health everyone should be 
give responsibility as per the requirement the disaster management authority will discuss and they will allocate the work guidelines to the individuals that is including different areas of the government as well as the ngos as well as the individual people's volunteers and according to that the preparedness plan should be implemented the plan or suggestion from different departments will be collectively collected by the disaster management team or authority and they will approve after checking all the points there may be difference in priorities the individual priority that local people priority and the national priority may be different so that also should be considered and we should not leave the local people as such we need to give importance for them that's the way of giving or preparing preparedness plans after that next is to have coordination we have different structural and non structural preparedness strategies or mitigation purpose are to be implemented for that we need complete coordination for such things whenever we are having a plan we have to get coordination from different elements of preparedness strategy and we should have a information management system or data management system what are the things we are planning that we prepared and what are how to coordinate that's the second stage there should be lead for every team that's in the case of police there should be a person to be communicated with the disaster management team and in the health there will be a responsible person in fire force similarly there will be a responsible person so in such a way we need to create a database based on disaster management and we should be having an early warning system as in the class we have mentioned it in several times that early warning system is mandatory for safeguarding people from disaster they can prepare themselves by hearing the warning or receiving the warning through media so early warning system is a component of comprehensive disaster preparedness strategy and we should mobilize the resources definitely we have mentioned that whenever a disaster happens we need to prepare a 72 hours self kit including food cloth medicine etc but we should be able to move these resources to the affected communities in some cases some people may not be having that kit or not in a situation to prepare the kit so in such situation we need to or we should be able to move our resource to the places locations and preparedness will not be completed until a public education training and rehearsals are done we can see different type of mock drills in our cities regarding terrorist attacks road accidents and some awareness campaigns and classes are provided for us if uh, currently if you are not wearing helmet or not wearing seat belt the motor vehicle department will take you to the class where they will motivate you regarding accidents and effects of accidents and some examples of severe accidents and what the condition of their family everything will be explained well and the public is aware aware about those situations by the proper arrangement and community based disaster preparedness 
is something where everyone the inside the community is working together working as a volunteer for saving all the people in the community in such situation the local people who are the volunteers can have very good understanding very good knowledge about the location so they can take the rescue team that's include police military everyone to that affected zone in a safety manner they can identify what is the condition of disaster they may have prior experience in such disasters so these are the main components or these are the components of comprehensive disaster preparedness strategies and we have three type of disaster preparedness whenever we are preparing ourselves from the disaster we need to focus on three stages that is target oriented preparedness task oriented preparedness disaster oriented preparedness we cannot implement all the preparedness in every condition we should have disaster oriented uh, this uh, preparedness for natural disasters but in road accidents if we are focusing on disaster oriented preparedness we cannot have much benefit first one is target oriented preparedness or here the target will be specific we are going to uh, save someone that is we are going to save the elderly people or humans or disabled people so that target is the very important thing whenever a disaster is going to be happen some people will be allocated to safeguard them some people may not be able to walk or move from one place to another in such cases we have to provide a carry bench to hold the people from that area to outside and second one is task oriented preparedness here the main important is not given to the target here but it is focusing on task and when you are uh, considering this one there are different teams in a disaster management authority of disaster management that's include health team there will be police there will be fire force there will be coordinating team that is administrative team there will be rescue team volunteers ngos etc and the medical team will take care of the medical side along they will mainly focus on health related issues in a disaster risk management so we will prepare the people medical field that is first aid box how to use first aid and were to reach in such a situation during a disaster and which is the nearest medical center every medical related things will be prepared by that responsible team that is task oriented preparedness the militants will be all military people will be act in the rescue process and they will take their equipments including helicopters helipads and or uh, rope everything they have good training at um, different uh, parts borders and different parts of uh, our nation so they will be taking the responsibility there will be administrative team there will be controlling overall performance overall activities in a disaster management and also there will be disaster oriented preparedness so here we will mainly focus on disaster and its occurrence how many times that may happen for that that disaster is our prime objective that is when we are considering earthquakes we are preparing since there is a disaster earthquake chance so we are preparing to avoid that disaster we will provide isolated flooring or pillaring that's an example we are focusing on disaster we are preparing to face the disaster so that's the third one these are the 
basic types of disaster preparedness okay i'm continuously reading it so please uh, follow everything you can understand or study nicely by yourself but when i am uh, reading it to you you can have good look over than what i am showing you sir so important important question important question all important illa da ana specific aayittum illa karena ee parnirikkunnale disaster management almost ellam thanne oru pole important aayittulla oru bhagangal aanu 